Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new router from Netgear. This is the XR500, and it's uh, Lamborghini-like appearance means that it is built for gaming, and this one has the Duma Router OS built in, and we're going to see what this Router OS does and how well you can manage your traffic on this device here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before it is uploaded. Let's get into it and see what this new router is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This sells for $299 on Amazon right now, uh, which is $100 more than another Netgear router with the same hardware, the R7800. This one, at least as far as I can tell, has almost exactly the same specifications uh, but a different operating system driving it. So if you like what you see with the Duma OS, it looks like the price premium is about 100 bucks for that OS. Uh, otherwise, you can get the other one and get pretty much the same performance, I would imagine, out of it. So we'll uh, take a look at that operating system in a minute. On the front here, you've got a bunch of LED lights. There is a way to shut them all off with the exception of the power button here. I'll explain in a second. You also have a, a Wi-Fi cutoff switch here if you want to get everybody off the Wi-Fi network right away. And you have your WPS button here for pairing up printers and other devices that uh, support that push button pairing with the router. On the left-hand side here, you've got two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, these you can attach remote or external storage to and use it as remote storage. Uh, so I have plugged in a super fast SSD into this a little bit earlier. It showed up on my network like a uh, NAS device would, but I'm not getting NAS speeds out of it. I'd like to see about 100 megabytes per second of data transfer on a NAS, and I'm only getting about 60 megabytes per second or so out of the router here. But you know, for dropping off documents or doing backups or something, it might be adequate for that kind of activity, and uh, you can attach two hard drives to this if you wish. But again, it's no uh, NAS replacement. On the back, we've got our usual array of Ethernet ports. For a $300 router, I would like to see a few more than what we're getting here. There are four gigabit Ethernet ports plus a uh, gigabit LAN port here. I did some testing on my LAN, and the uh, connection out to the internet looks like it'll support gigabit speeds up and down, so it doesn't look like there's any real uh, hardware impediments to fast internet connections if you're lucky enough to have one. Uh, but again, I would like to see a few more ports for the LAN side of it, just because I've seen some other routers that have eight versus four like this one does. Easy enough, though, to add a switch to the mix. Your power button is here. You've got a, a hardware button, which is nice. So if you want to turn it off, you can actually shut it down uh, physically here with this nice push button. Uh, on the other side here, you've got the LED on-off button. And what this will do is stop all the blinking lights on the front. So I did that a little earlier. You can see what happens when that switch is thrown. Uh, it basically uh, turns off all the lights with the exception of the power light so that you know uh, it is on there. Inside, it has a 4x4 AC wireless radio, which we'll test the bandwidth of in just a second. So uh, very nice to see a good number of AC wireless channels available. It supports MIMO and all the other stuff that uh, these high-end routers tend to support there. I did a range test a little bit earlier in the house just to see how this one compares to the other uh, Wi-Fi devices I use around here. And I found on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum that I was doing about 13 or 15 percent better uh, than I was with my Synology router, the uh, AC2600 I've been running with for the last year or two. So uh, definitely a good range here on this one. Even the 5 gigahertz seemed to do slightly better than some of my other equipment in the house. But I do like to remind people that wireless is different in every situation. I live in a very sparsely populated area where I don't have a lot of competing uh, Wi-Fi access points coming into the mix. So uh, generally, I get good Wi-Fi coverage throughout my home. But if I go out to New York City, for example, and visit some friends over there, uh, there's a gazillion access points all within the same building that will interfere and reduce your overall range. Uh, you also have other factors like the construction of your home. So you could be in a place like me, but if you got a lot of concrete and stucco all over the place, that might be uh, absorbing those radio frequencies more than my wood frame construction house might. Uh, you also run into a number of other scenarios too that will impact your overall performance. So what I like to recommend, especially for gamers, is that uh, you get yourself situated in such a way that you can get uh, your computer hardwired into the Ethernet ports on these types of routers because you will get the best possible 
uh, performance out of that. Now with that caveat out of the way, we're going to run a real perfect world simulation here on the local network. So I've got uh, this MacBook Pro connected wirelessly to the router here. It's sitting right next to it as you can see. And we're running a test called an iPerf test, which is measuring the amount of bandwidth we can push through the pipe. And what we're doing here is uh, basically sending data wirelessly to the router and then out through this Ethernet cable that's connected to a computer uh, that is underneath the desk right now. And this is how we're able to measure the potential speed of the wireless radio here, at least with this configuration. And as you can see here, we're getting about 800 megabits per second uh, from the computer to the router over to the uh, other computer that's connected up via a wire. And uh, that is a very nice amount of performance that we have as a potential here. Uh, but remember, we're on our local network. I unfortunately don't have that kind of speed going out to the internet. Uh, and of course, there's nobody else using this right now, and I don't have a lot of interference in my home either. So your mileage is going to vary. The further you get away from it, uh, the less performance you'll see here. But uh, this is what I'm seeing for its potential here, and I am quite pleased with uh, what it's able to deliver. Now, the real value to this, I think, is the uh, Duma OS that's built into it because it makes things very simple for sharing your internet connection with other people in the house. And uh, that is something that many other routers do, but don't seem to do as well as this one does, at least from the standpoint of making it quick and easy to get it working and for you to be able to quickly understand exactly how it works. And if you ever had issues when everybody's home in the house and streaming Netflix and everything and your game starts to drop off, uh, there's some things here that you can set up to basically carve out some bandwidth for yourself that doesn't get shared with anybody. So let's take a look and see how that works. So this is the Duma OS dashboard. This is what you'll see when you first log into the router with its web-based control panel here. And it looks really nice. In fact, you can move everything around and adjust things. Uh, you can grab these uh, little uh, applets from all the other uh, options here on screen. So for example, if I wanted to maybe uh, drop the log section into the front dashboard, I just have to click on that little push pin there. And then when I go back to the front page here, you'll see the logs there. I could uh, maybe make this a little bit wider here to get a better view of it. So you do have a lot of flexibility here as to how you want the router to present information to you when you first log in. I'm not going to jump through everything this does, but I'm going to focus on a few things of interest that are unique to this, as well as a few things that I like uh, that have been included with this as well, just so you can get a feel for what some of your options are. Now, the least uh, you know, complete feature to me has been this uh, geo filter thing here. And I think people who maybe use Duma OS a little bit more than I do probably will have some feedback for me on this. But generally, the way this works is that you can limit on a per game basis uh, where your computer connects to. So if you're playing Counter-Strike Go, for example, and you only want to play with people uh, within, for example, the United States or North America, uh, you can basically set the boundaries here. And what it will do is basically block any traffic that falls outside of this area. So it won't even connect to a server uh, that's not close to you geographically. And on the PC, a lot of games do this already, but uh, this is another way to do it if you want. Uh, they did say in the manual that it might be better suited for console games and that kind of thing. I honestly could not find anything on the PC that really worked with this. Uh, I did try to set up a couple of things, including uh, some Unreal Engine games. I also tried to uh, add in uh, Counter-Strike as well. So what you do to get this going here is you first define uh, which device is going to get this geo filter uh, attached to it. So I'm going to have my Alienware gaming laptop, for example, be the one that we focus on there. And I'm going to select Source Engine here and uh, click Done. And what will happen here is that any time that computer loads up a Source Engine game, it will apply this filter if I turn it on. And here's the problem that I'm having. Uh, is that I can't, in many of the games, activate this filtering mode, which actually makes this work. Uh, so right now, it's kind of just set to uh, looking at network traffic that one of these two games is generating and then showing me within the map where my fellow players are located. But 
uh, right now I can't get it to actually begin filtering. I think this is something that just needs to get updated because it just doesn't seem to be working at all for me right now. Uh, and I'm on the latest firmware, so maybe if they do make some improvements here, I'll come back and look at it again. And I'm sure somebody will let me know in the comments section how I am not doing it correctly. But uh, for the moment, I just can't seem to get this feature operating. But there is something really cool, though, uh, related to quality of service and how you can, again, uh, make your gaming PC be the preferred computer on the network for uh, network traffic going in and out. And they really make this very, very easy to do. And we're going to do a fun little uh, live demonstration here using that iPerf test we used a little bit earlier uh, so we can actually visualize uh, these kinds of settings that you can apply to it and watch them actually take place in real time. Let's take a look. So here we are on the quality of service settings for the Duma OS here. And right now we've got all of our computers here represented on this little chart. And you'll see the number 13 here because right now these are all set to uh, basically share the bandwidth equally. But what we can do is actually drag these little icons around and adjust the priority pretty quickly. Now before we do that, let me show you what we're going to do here with this little real-time test. On the right, I've got an Intel NUC that is pushing data through the router to uh, another computer on my network right now. We're actually using the router and simulating an internet connection here. So these uh, pings are going out to a computer outside of the router's uh, local network. And then this Alienware gaming laptop is doing the same thing to a different computer, again, utilizing this virtual internet connection that we've set up here. And you can see that they're relatively evenly split here, but the Alienware seems to be getting a little bit more of the bandwidth than I would like it to get right now. And I want the NUC to get the best possible speed for this connection. So what I'm going to do here is grab this uh, 13 and drag it to the NUC and make that 100%. I'm going to click on Update Distribution, and when we drop back over to this test here, you're going to see now that the NUC is now getting uh, all the bandwidth it needs to kind of run its test here. It's doing better uh, than the Alienware is here because the router is prioritizing the NUC on this little local network here, and uh, the NUC is going to get traffic versus the Alienware. The Alienware can still communicate out, but the NUC has first priority, and we can see just how quickly all of that changed. Now, if I go back here and just reset the distribution and click Update, you'll see that uh, change here very rapidly. You'll see it kind of drop off for a second, and now uh, they're more evenly split again, or at least the NUC isn't doing as well as it was before. So uh, this is something that's on a lot of other routers, but I found it to be very easy to configure here because it does a lot of the setup for you. Typically with quality of service, you need to know what your speeds up and down are. Uh, the router does that test automatically and uh, adjusts things so that all you need to do here is just move these sliders around to uh, get all of this working. Uh, you can also jump into an individual device here and adjust its percentage this way as well. So if you wanted to get a little more granular, maybe type in the number or something, you could uh, do that here too. So that's pretty helpful. Now another neat feature of the router is its anti-buffer bloat protection. And you'll find that on the QoS screen here, uh, just above the graph we were just playing with. And uh, what this is really useful for are for people like me that have limited upstream bandwidth. So my upstream on a good day is about 12 megabits per second. And if I'm playing a game and then my kids start uploading something to YouTube and my wife sends out a huge big email attachment, uh, that upstream connection is going to get saturated very quickly. And a lot of routers actually have a feature built into them to kind of hang on to upstream packets until uh, that upstream pipe gets a little freed up and then it releases those packets out to the internet. Uh, that works fine if you're uploading an email attachment or something to FTP, but not so much in a gaming environment where you need all those packets coming back and forth in as close to real time as possible. So what you can do is enable this feature uh, to prevent that buffering from happening. And they've got some options here. Uh, one is to just turn it on so it's always available to you, which might be useful if you've got a lot of crazy stuff going on on your network. And they give you some really good tips here as to how to configure this properly. So right now it's telling me that I need to lower my sliders below 100% so that uh, we don't uh, saturate our connection here when we activate this feature. So you might want to turn your upstream down to maybe 90% to have some room here for this feature to activate. Uh, these uh, maximum bandwidth settings here are based on the speed test that the router runs in the background. So if you're not seeing your full connection speed, you might want to get 
get uh, everybody off the network and have it run that test again to get yourself uh, to your natural bandwidth allocation, if you will. But one feature that I thought was kind of cool was the ability to use this high priority traffic detection, which doesn't always turn on this feature, but will enable it when you've got something that uh, should it, turn it on, for example. And the way you do that here is you go over to the pra traffic prioritization at the bottom of the screen. And what we're going to do here is add that Alienware gaming laptop again. And what it's got is a bunch of presets for a number of popular games here. So for example, if I want to make sure I never get this buffering when I'm uh, playing my Counter-Strike session here, I can click that and click on Done. And then when the router detects that I've got that uh, source engine game running, it's going to enable that anti-buffer bloat feature and uh, give me priority to ensure that my packets, first of all, are getting delivered ahead of my wife's email attachment, uh, but we're also not getting that buffering that would limit the ping rates for those packets as well. And uh, it's nice that you can do that on a per game basis. It doesn't have a lot of games built into this, but uh, what you can do here is also go into the advanced settings. And if you know the uh, port ranges for uh, the communication that you're doing over the network, you can uh, basically set it up for yourself manually here as well. But overall, these quality of service features are really well executed here and very easy to understand. And it automatically sets a lot of the features up for you, so it's very easy to get the result you're looking for without having to mess around with it too much. And a couple other things to check out. You've got a nice real-time network monitor here to see what's going in and out of your network in real time. Uh, you also have the ability to very easily find people on your network who might be abusing it and blocking them if you wish, so you have that uh, as an available option too. A couple other things in the settings that caught my eye. Uh, by the way, you do have guest network capabilities on here like you have on most routers. In fact, uh, most of the things that you see on modern routers, especially those that cost about 300 bucks, you see here. So you do have the ability to block sites and uh, manage when uh, the kids can come on, for example. So you do have the scheduling features for access and that sort of thing. But uh, in the advanced settings are a couple of items that I found of most interest. Uh, the first is that it does have an open VPN server uh, that you can enable here. So that's a very nice, secure way to get access to your remote network when you're not, or your local network when you're not at home. And it also has downloadable packages to get all of this working. So that's really helpful there. Another neat thing is that it does support VLANs here. You can enable a uh, VLAN by going down to here. We can add a new VLAN uh, tag, for example, and assign it to either the Wi-Fi uh, directly or to one of the ports on the Ethernet switch on the back. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you can set up a separate SSID for a different, different VLAN tag, but I don't typically see a lot of routers with VLAN configuration like this built in. Uh, this one's got it, which I thought was uh, really useful there. And you can also do some other stuff here like control how things blink on the LED on the front there. So uh, lots of nice little options here if you want to get into it. And I think this is something that will improve over time as this Duma OS continues to get worked on. Uh, the folks behind Duma OS are a distinct company. They are focused on this. So they're not making hardware. They're making the operating system. They have their own router, but they have uh, licensed and paired up with Netgear on this one to uh, really get this thing going. And I think it's going to improve quite a bit as this develops. And certainly uh, Netgear's market reach is going to be useful for the company. So all in, I am quite pleased with this router and its performance. I like the software quite a bit, but it does come at a premium price over that R7800 router I mentioned earlier, which is essentially the same hardware, yet costs $100 less. But if you are really struggling to get your network under control, especially for gaming or uh, other tasks where you want to prioritize your computer, computer over others in the house, I think this one might give you an easier way to do that. Other routers do exactly what this one does with all those QoS features, but I did find the configuration on here to be a lot easier than I've seen elsewhere, and I'm kind of intrigued to see where this Duma OS goes next. And a lot of people like the Netgear hardware quite a bit, and if you are looking for uh, some easier management, uh, this might be worth considering. So until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.